Knit All The Things, the podcast, episode two. Um, I'm Linda. I'm a Swedish uh, crafter, I guess. Um, I mainly cross stitch, but lately I have been stitching quite a lot. So I decided to start a podcast to just bring you along on my learning journey, <laughs> whatever you would call it. Um, it's been a while since I made my first uh, podcast um, and I wasn't expecting the, that I was going to knit as much as I have done. <laughs> so I have one, two, three, I have three finishes and three, no, four <laughs> whips. So yeah, um, knit all the things. Yeah, don't tell me I didn't warn you. <laughs> However, I do remember that uh, in my last podcast, I said I wanted to try out um, some stuff to knit before I jumped into stitch knitting the shawls, the Stephen West shawls, because I'm, as so many of you out there, am totally in love with Stephen's shawls and shirts and hats and all of it. I love it. Um, but I feel, you know, kind of like a newbie, not so um, comfortable with the knitting. So I wanted to start with something else. And then I told you about the hat where I was going to use some, was a kit I uh, bought in Sweden with um, Le Petit Silk and Mohair and Bio Shetland Pure or Organic Wool. And I have started a ravel, ravelry, ra, ra, ravel, ravel, <laughs> oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Ravelry page where I add some of my projects and I add the name of the, the yarns and stuff. And this is the other. But when I was um, uh, making the yarn into a ball, I still don't have these things to wind up the yarn into cakes. So I do it by hand and I find it very soothing. I love standing and just winding them up by hand. While I was doing this, I was thinking about this hat, the artichoke hat. It's a Swedish pattern. Uh, it is on Ravelry. The designer is there. And I was thinking, I knew I had bought yarn, yarn and the pattern for this hat last year or yeah, last year. Uh, so I started digging in the little yarn stash I had and I did find a wound up ball. Now I've used this. So I don't have the, you know, the tag for it. So I don't know what it is, but I do know it's wool because it's from the same place I bought the, the other yarn. And I was thinking because uh, you could get the pattern in English and Swedish. So I wanted to, I want to learn the English uh, words and all this. So I said, let's start with this hat in English. And I'm happy I did because it didn't turn out so well. This is the hat. I haven't washed it. I haven't blocked it. So the hat itself is very nice. I'm very happy with it. And I followed the pattern that I think there was only one um, size. And I really love the lace pattern, how it turned out. It really showed very well. But when I put on the hat, well, maybe you don't think it doesn't look that too small, but I found it very small. I want usually a, a little bit of a, a bigger hat. So I wasn't too pleased with it. 
And I was like, well, I don't want to make two of these. I asked my daughter if she wanted it. And she was like, uh-uh, no, no. <laughs> so I looked at when I, when I bought the, the kit. Here's the other hat. When I bought the yarn for, for the, the hat, uh, I got the same pattern again. But then I started comparing the two. The pattern I bought for the same hat last the beginning of last year and the pattern for the same hat which i bought now in december i think it was yeah Jan november december and there was some differences there first of all sizes and needle sizes so i said if i wasn't happy with this i thought this was too small um i'm going with the bigger so i did and I love this hat. I'm so pleased. I'm going to have it hold it here to the lighter background, but uh, it's the same pattern. It's the artichoke. I love it. And I was thinking this is not going to be so warm because there's a lot of holes in it, you know, from the lacing, but it's so nice and warm and it's actually a little bit, a little bit too big. I haven't washed it or blocked it or anything. Uh, but it does slide up, uh, so I think maybe if I, when I um, wash it and don't block it at all, maybe it will shrink down a little bit, but I was so, so pleased with it. Very, very happy with it, and I love the mohair. It's so soft and nice, so the pattern called for two of these. Uh, skeins of mohair but I have some left from the first one but it's really soft and nice uh, it is 30% silk and 70% kid mohair so what's a kid mohair what's a mohair where is the mohair from which animal I don't know these things but there is a difference from this mohair from the mohair I'm using in my West Knit, West Knits kit shawl. So difference. I love this more. I like this a lot. So, so pleased with this. I hope it will shrink down just a little bit. Um, so after I finished those two, I decided it is time to start my first shawl and that and now I just threw the cable into my coffee. Silly. Was I knitting on this in my last? I don't remember now. Oh my God. Anyway, I finished this shawl. It's from Expression Fiber Arts and it's their kit. They have like the wine yard, something. It's three different yarns. It's a worsted, a fingering, and I think it's two fingering. And there is some silver in it. And it is, I think it was like an eight row repeat. And you changed yarn for every row. So it was a lot of fun, even though it was like the same, the same very nice it has such great drape i haven't blocked it yet because i'm waiting for i bought two um blocking kits and one i could only find one in sweden so i had to order the other one from england and it's stuck in the customs at the moment what i didn't like about this shawl is I don't know if I made the, a mistake or if the, so this is like the beginning of the uh, shawl, the first rows, the setup rows, but the ending rows look like this. So I didn't like that, but I'm gonna try to, no, I'm not gonna try to stand up. I'm not gonna fit in. But you know, it's a long shawl. And the thing is that you're going to be able to, 
wear the shawl in seven different ways with the help of two I-cord cables. And I love making these. I'm just blown away that you can make cords by knitting three stitches. <laughs> so my thought was to make it as a bolero, is that how you call it? And, you know, so it became like a, sh a little bit of a shirt and then put the cables on my arms like this. I think that would be very nice and have it like that. But since I don't like the ending and I don't want to redo it, I'm not, don't think I'm going to do that. I'm, I will, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I will make a poncho of it instead. But it's very nice. I love the drape in it. I could seriously consider um, buying another kit and do it again. Definitely. So, did I learn anything from these three finishes? I probably, I probably, probably did. Um, I think I mentioned it in my last podcast. Read the patterns carefully. All right. Don't just assume that the row is going to be like that because it was that the last time. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Working on circular, circular needles are fun. I like that. And I like this was knitted on a five millimeter and I like the, the thicker needles for my hands because I have pain in my fingers. So yeah, that won't make sense because I want to knit all the socks too. <clears throat> um, yeah, and the cast on method, I used the, the tubular cast on on both hats and it's pain in the butt, you know, but I, really love how it looks. So even if it's a pain, I like it. Um, what else? So, and I'm learning, you know, the, you know, instead of writing stitches, you write STS, instead of writing, you know, knit front and back, you write KFB, all those is it called acronyms or something? I'm, I'm learning those words. So I'm learning that. And I was using this row counter, but I have learned something. And that is, I have found that there is an app called Knit Companion. I'm watching uh, Knitting Natty. She's my favorite um, podcaster at the moment. She, yeah, she has really caught my attention. Like Rachel Ray caught my attention for the diamond painting and the cross stitching and the knitting. Um, it's just something about her that I like. Anyway. And she, I looked at one of her episodes saying, these are like the things I, I like that she likes. And she mentioned Knit Companion and she was like, I could never ever stitch without this thing. And you know, you get most of your patterns in a PDF. So I was like, well, what's this? And oh my God, it's like, you know, I'm a cross stitcher and I use Pattern Keeper and for you who who also cross stitch and knows about this app, you know how things changed when this app came. And that is how I felt when I found Knit Companion. I don't need this thing to count my rows anymore. I can do it there. I can mark where I'm in the pattern. And yeah, I, I love it. I love it. So I bought that. You pay like 10 bucks, 12 
dollars maybe a year for this thing and you can get your patterns from Ravel Ravelry so yeah <clears throat> so I learned about that that was like the big wow thing so I also since I mentioned Nitty Nitty uh, I saw that she's working on a granny uh, square blanket and a scrappy striped blanket which is crochet and I like crocheting uh, I don't like the look of it so much but I like the process in crocheting so I had some scraps from my hat uh, which I started with I guess it was the yarn was actually too thick uh, compared to the next row which is um, I just realized I need to I need to stitch another row for this anyway uh, this is um, a skein of yarn I bought from Nora George in the UK also in 2020 um, and I have quite a lot of it left so I was like well I like the scrap striped blanket so I added that um, and then I tried one of the squares too uh, which is um, this is Nitty Natty's pattern so that was fast and very relaxing and I think the hand dyed yarns um, turn out so cool in these squares so but the main thing is the the big blanket I like that so I joined Nora George's uh, mini skein Harry Potter blanket club so I will get five minis every month for a while um, to add on this blanket which I'm looking forward to I can do that every now and then so that's like the two other whips I had and I'm trying out new crochet hooks um, I've always used you know these thin uh, metal ones I don't know if this really makes a difference but I, I got one of the armor um, I don't remember one of the armor ones too it has a bit of a thicker handle and I like that one better but I couldn't find it in the size D in Sweden at least I couldn't find it so and then yeah when I was knitting a lot in my 20s I knitted a lot of socks on five needles you know sock needles two-pointed needles I don't know what you call it but nowadays you knit socks on a magic loop and I had bought this also in 2020 sock yarn it's cheap yarn but I bought these and it's you know it's self striping I bought them just to you know practice stitching socks on magic loops so I have done this a little bit you know every now and then a few rows and it's like 75% wool 25% nylon and um, I started at the um, what do you call it calf I don't know I started here and this is new to me that you put put in some waste yarn and then I'm gonna pick up stitches here and stitch the heel last that is weird that is not how I stitched socks when I did it before you did everything at once the heel and yeah so I'm excited to try that out actually uh, and I like the magic loop it's a bit difficult here in this you know like the two first rounds but then it's no problem and 
yeah, I don't think I'm getting, getting any particular ladder here where I switch between needles. So I think that's going pretty well. Um, I'm just, again, I'm following Knitty Natty's um, YouTube video on knitting a sock. So I'm following her instructions and I just want to stitch all the socks. I don't want to stitch socks like this just because it's just uh, what you call that. It's called garter, garter stitching. Um, I want to do, you know, with the patterns and everything, lace patterns and cables and stuff. I want a challenge. So, but this is practicing. So I need to make another one of these and then I'm considering trying to start from the toe up. I've never done that before. I might, I'm not sure. Or I will do two socks the same like this and then try from the toe up with one of the other yarns. And the thing is I want to get, you know, the hand dyed yarn and stitch nice, nice socks. Um, I did try the magic loop with my um, I had Addy needles, I think, and then I tried my Hia Hia. I don't like it at all, at all. No. So I bought myself a Chicago, Sh Chicago, Chicago, Chicago needle. And I like that. It's there's ju they're just my favorite needles. So that's my other whip. Um, and then the most nice thing is that I started my first Stephen West shawl. And I went with the beginner one, the Curvette shawl, and I'm loving it. It is such relaxing and I'm actually like 75% done. Um, yeah, I just have it on one cable, so I won't be able to, to show you the shawl and I'm, I'm fixing a mistake here, so I can't, whew, yeah. Um, yeah, I noticed that the curve in the curvette, here it is, the center. Right away. And it's so beautiful. There is drape in this. It's not as drapey and heavy as the, the red one, the one here, excuse me. Um, but it's garter stitches and there's the yarn overs and um, knit together. So I'm really looking forward to be finished with this and, and blocking it out. Um, and there's five different yarns in here. So I started with, um, and I, I didn't want to, you know, go crazy with the colors, the first shawl, but I am later. I'm, I just went with blue because I like blue. So I started with light blue and the, the mohair is a light gray. And then I got to the dark blue and then there was like gray with a little bit of blue speckling in there. And then I am just started the very last um, gray, which is a very dark gray, which is the border. And it is, I have my yarn in this bag and now it's all just blurry. Um, so the mohair is called glow hair. Um, yeah, glow hair. So it's 75, 72% mohair and 28% silk. That's the mohair. And then the other is the Mominoki. Um, I showed you, I think I showed you these 
in my last floss tube. So this is 75% wool and 25% polyamide, polyamide superwash. I'll just show you and you can read it. So it was a kit I got from them. So very nice. And the shipping, oh my God. I think it took like two, three days. No, when they actually shipped it out, it took one or two days. It was super fast. So, so I'm 75% done on that. I hope to finish the border just within th the coming days. So then, now I've showed the whips. I've showed you my finished pro objects. Let's talk. I bought another kit from Westnitz and I bought Coco knits, um, what you call these? It's those, um, yes, stitch markers, duh. <laughs> the small size, got some of them. Um, and I have them actually here in my shawl. Um, I don't want to pull too much since I'm fixing a mistake. So I have them here. And this is where I marked where the mistake is. So I'm, I'm knitting backwards to fix it. Um, and as I said, I know when, I didn't know this before, but you need blocking materials, blocking mats. So I got the Coco Knits kit. Yeah, there's everything you need in there, but if you're gonna block out these big shawls, I need two kits, so there's one more coming. But the most exciting thing is my other Stephen West kit. And the thing is, I started with the beginner shawl and he does say in the Curvet um, YouTube video, that if you want to, you know, take it up a notch, um, you should do the quake. And I really want to do the quake. But I was also thinking, I've done the curvette. I know that the quake shawl is, you know, kind of the same basic. And I'm afraid if I do another one like that, I might get bored. And I don't want to get bored because then I stop knitting and I don't want to stop knitting because I want to knit all the things. So I feel I want to bring on, take on the challenge of shellography. There's a lot of videos. A lot of you who has commented on my last video said you're fine. There's so much help to get. You can do it. So I'm going to give it a try. And if I feel like I can't, it's too difficult, I will just stop and do something easier and then come back to it later. So it's gonna crinkle because I have it in a plastic bag so far. <clears throat> now I'm like a black blue person, red. Yes, I do have, it's not red, red. It's a darker red. I do use that sometimes as well, but I'm a black blue person. And that is why, you know, as I showed on my Curvet shawl, I usually go with those colors. But what blew me away with Steven's shawls is the color explosion in them. And I just felt like I usually don't wear shawls. I feel kind of awkward in them, but I like them. I mean, they're beautiful. I think it's a piece of art. And um, I just want to enjoy the knitting and I don't think knitting with black and blue always is going to be so much fun. So I wanted the color explosion. And if it's not my colors or if I'm never gonna wear it, I 
don't care. It's going to be amazing anyway. Okay. So <clears throat> I went with this color kit. Uh, they look actually kind of blue, but they are not. They are more of a green, all of them. And I would say, I know that he says go light to dark. And I think this is the like light to dark, light, middle and dark. So this is an evergreen, what evergreen? And it's Mominoki. And the next one here is a mint. Hello. There we go. Mominoki. And this is sage. From light to dark. And then I know he says you want a color pop and something for framing, I think, or the other way around. So since I know how the shawl is going to look like, I know that the color pop, no, the framing, which I think is the color pop is going to be, there's going to be a lot of it in the beginning of the shawl. And I don't know, yellow is not my color but it's such a nice color. It's curry. And the other one here is Carrie. And he says something with, you know, oh my goodness, it's not the easiest thing. If this is going to be like the framing, and I think that that's going to look amazing. Even, you know, the, the yellow is going to look amazing with this, these greens, you know, I'm holding them tight. So, I mean, all of them are green shades except for this. So this has to be my color pop. I cannot wait. And I'm starting this as soon as soon as I am done with my curved shawl. So wish me luck. And I will put the information of the shawl and my yarn on my rever reverly, rever you know what I'm talking about. It's just me who cannot pronounce some words. I'm Linda 144 hobbies on rever revelry. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. So if you want to take a closer look on my projects there, you can go check it out. Um, if you have any questions about them, just go ahead and ask. Um, I think that's it. And uh, I'm planning on coming back uh, and it, on in the end of January or the beginning of February to give you a new update. Just heads up, I've started to cross stitching again, so I won't be knitting as much as I've done in December, but I'm going to knit slowly by slowly on my socks and on my shawls. And I will let you all know all the things that happens along the way. <laughs> so yeah, that's all. Um, Everyone, uh, thank you for watching. For all the new ones who wants to check out a new podcaster in the yarn world, I'm very new at this. Um, I don't know what I'm talking about, really. <laughs> Welcome. I hope you will come back to all my watchers who keep coming back. I love you. Thank you very much. Have a